Hey, we've got the June 2009 final exam from the New York State Regents. We're going to start with page two. Uh, don't forget to download a copy of this from the website and play along. Question one. On a highway, a car is driven 80 kilometers during an hour, and then it goes 50 more kilometers for a half hour, and then 40 kilometers on the final half hour. What is the average speed for the entire trip? Well, the formula for average velocity, average speed, is simply the total distance divided by the time. So average velocity is distance over time. Now, you could ask a lot of fancy questions about this, but this isn't one of those questions. What's the total distance? 80 plus 50 plus 40, that's about 170 kilometers. And uh, an hour, half hour, and half hour, two hours. So uh, it's going to be 170 kilometers divided by two hours. And uh, that's going to be, what, about 85? Sure. Question two. A vector diagram represents the horizontal component, or force in the h direction, horizontal, and the vertical component of a 24 newton force acting at 35 degrees. And uh, what do they want? They want to know the two components. Well, obviously, we could use the trig function. We know the uh, uh, cosine function tells us the horizontal. Force in the x is equal to force cosine of the angle. And force in the y is force times the sine of the angle. But let's look at this. We've got 24 newtons. So this is going to be uh, something less than 24. But it's not going to be three and a half. It's not going to be 4.9. It's going to be big. And so now we've got two more choices. One shows the horizontal being 14 and the vertical being 20. And the other is the horizontal is 20 and the vertical is 14. Well, it's closer to 35 degrees, so this is going to be the larger of the two. The answer has to be that. Use the trig if you want, but these are multiple choice questions, and uh, they're kind of easy. Question three, which is a vector? Which of these can be shown with an arrow? Well, it's not time. Time isn't shown with an arrow. A speed, that's uh, distance over time, and so a car going in a circle uh, has speed. It doesn't have velocity. Don't use an arrow for that. So power or impulse. Now, yeah, I guess you probably have to just know this one. Power is work over time, force times distance over time. Um, but power, uh, the rate at which work is done, work is the ability, uh, or energy is the ability to do work. So it's uh, the consumption of energy over time. Power can be used to describe a light bulb, 100 watts of power. And a light bulb, clearly not a vector. So it's impulse. Now impulse can be found, and that's J, impulse. And so J is force times time. Now force is clearly a vector, and force being applied for a period of time uh, would act in a certain direction. So impulse is the vector. And right here for question four, a high-speed train in Japan travels a distance of 300 kilometers in 3.6 times 10 to the 3 seconds. What's the average speed of the train? Well, its average speed is going to be distance over time. And so uh, we plug in the numbers, 300 kilometers divided by 3.6 times 10 to the 3 seconds. Get out the calculator. And when I reach for my calculator, I realize something. My answers here are in meters per second. Meters per second. I've got 300 kilometers, which is why I keep putting my units down. Well, a kilometer is 1,000 meters, so that's 300... One, two, three. That's 300,000 meters. And let's see, 3.6 times 10 to the 3 seconds. Now I get out my calculator. And I come up with uh, about 83.3 uh, meters per second. Pretty cool. Question 5. A 25 newton weight, mass is 25 newtons. Falls freely from rest. Velocity initial is zero from the roof of a building. What's the total distance? It falls in a time of one second. 
Well, let's go find us a formula. Yeah, but before I do that, uh, let's remember what causes it to fall. It's the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. So we find this one, very popular. Uh, distance is equal to VIT plus 1 half AT squared. Distance equals VIT plus 1 half AT squared. VI is 0, so that element falls out. Distance equals 1 half AT squared. Time, 1 squared is 1 times 9.8. Half of that's about 4.9 meters. A golf ball is given an initial speed of 20 meters per second and returns to level ground. So you hit a golf ball and it lands on the ground. Which launch angle above level ground results in the ball traveling the greatest horizontal distance? We want it to go the greatest that way. Neglect friction. And that's a tricky one because for golf balls, they're aerodynamic. And they actually uh, will fly better at, at somewhat lower angles. However, uh, if you neglect friction, the greatest range comes at 45 degrees of launch angle. Tricky question, especially if you're a golfer. Question 7 and 8. Uh, a go-kart travels around a flat, horizontal, circular track with a radius of 25 meters. Oh, I've been waiting for a chance to show my go-kart going around a circular track. It's actually a magnetic car. And if I set the track up right like this, it'll climb upside down. Eh? If you just put it like that, it'll actually move the track forward. Oh, I'm glad they asked this question. This is fun. I love this thing. Well, back to the problem. R is 25 meters. The mass of the go-kart with the rider is 200 kilograms. The magnitude of the maximum centripetal force exerted by the track on the go-kart. So this is the, the greatest amount of friction that you can get out of this system. Um, and so the maximum amount of centripetal force you could exert without sliding off the track. Force centripetal is 1200 newtons. What's the maximum velocity and that you could travel without sliding off the track? Well, we've got two formulas that deal with centripetal force. Force centripetal is m, acceleration centripetal. Acceleration centripetal is v squared over r. I'm going to combine the two of them and write uh, force centripetal equals mv squared over r. And here they're looking for the maximum velocity. So I've got to uh, do some algebra. Force centripetal is mv squared over r. Multiply both sides by r. Divide both sides by m. Take the square root of both sides. So r force centripetal divided by m is going to be equal to my maximum velocity. Take the square root of that, and that'll give you the velocity. And I get about 12 meters per second. Be careful. If you don't hit the square root button, you get 150, and that would be the wrong answer. That's really ripping, too. The last question, which change would increase the maximum speed? So what would cause a larger centripetal force? without sliding off the track. Decrease the coefficient of friction. Now that wouldn't work. It, that would have, if you reduce this, you'd have to reduce your speed. Um, you hit ice, you better slow down. Decrease the radius. If this goes down, then the force necessary would go up. That wouldn't help. Increase the radius. If the radius went up, then the force necessary would go down. And if the force went down, you could compensate by having a little bit more velocity. I think this is going to do it. Increase of the mass of the go-kart, no. No, that would increase the mass, increase the force needed, and uh, that wouldn't help. So it's choice three. That's fun.